are rated and ranked very high by various regulatory bodies. Gidardhan International Business School is affiliated to Guru Gobind Singh in the Basra University, Delhi, and is approved by All India Council for Technical Education, Ministry of HRD, Government of India for Technical Programs, and Bar Council of India for Law Programs. The institute is conducting programs like MBA, MBA International Business, BBA General, both first and second shift, BA LLB, and BBA LLB. GIPS has been graded A by National Assessment and Accreditation Council in second cycle. GIPS has been rated A plus by State Fee Regulatory Committee or Fee Committee of Government of NCT of Delhi. It has been rated highest grading A by Joint Inspection Committee of Government of NCT of Delhi and GGSIP University since 2013 till date. It has been rated grade A by Academic Audit Cell of Guru Gobind Singh Interpersonal University since 2011 till date. Gibbs has also achieved first star ranking in IIC MOE ranking 2021. Also, Gibbs has been rated as number two Pan India by Times Business School Survey in 2021, 2019, and 2018. At Gibbs, trust is an overall personality development of students so that they can face the challenges in their competitive professional life with value-based approach. Apart from providing quality education, emphasis is on to develop leadership qualities, listening abilities, and decision-making skills right from the beginning of their professional education. Going by this agenda, the Institute conducts personality development workshops and lectures on a regular basis. This series on understanding of national security and its various dimensions is a sequel to the same objective. A country's national security is its ability to protect itself from the threat of violence or attack. We must deal with threats to our national security regardless of the cost. The main objective of conducting this ELX is to create a peaceful and orderly environment and atmosphere, deepen students' understanding of country's development and national security, and hence students' sense of national identity. In order to fulfill our objective of inculcating such expertise in our students, we have an eminent speaker with us, Honorable Lieutenant General P.J.S. Panusar. Lieutenant General Panusar is former Deputy Chief Indian Integrated Defence Staff Operations responsible for coordinating military operations of the three services. He was responsible for raising the defense space and cyber agencies as well as the special forces division. He conducted the first ever space exercise in India nicknamed In Space X in 2019. He served three ten years in the military operations, doctorate at Army headquarters and on two UN missions, Mozambique and Sudan, both as chief operations officer. He was the chairman of the executive committee of Center for Joint Warfare Studies and United Services Institute of India, both premier defense think tanks. He is a distinguished fellow at the USI India. He is pursuing a PhD in indigenization of defense industry. He is a regular contributor to publishing articles and a regular speaker in the media channels. He has recently published a USI National Security Paper 2021 on role of niche and disruptive technologies in India's veterans and war fighting capabilities. So it's an honor to have you here. May I now request our director, sir, Professor Dr. Vikas Nath, sir, to welcome our Lieutenant General P.J. Spanu, sir, to the staff room. Good morning, uh, and Jai Hind. Uh, very happy to meet the young uh, generation of the future India. And uh, I'm very sure that you must be aspiring to contribute to the nation building in any which way your interest lies and the national interest is aligned. Every nation has aspirations, as every individual has an aspiration. Every nation has a national interest, as every individual has an individual interests. And if these two can come together, then you build a nation. And if they don't come together, you are just about a country. So have I generally described what is a nation and what is not a nation? India can be seen as a landmass. I've got a map of India and I will refer to it later. Are you comfortable with English or you want me to switch between English and Hindi or some other language also? 
India can be seen as a subcontinent, a landmass, and therefore large context of understanding the geography. You will realize that we are all slaves of geography. You are sitting in Delhi, and you can only do as much sitting in Delhi as you can do sitting here. You are not sitting in the United States of America. In a way, you are a slave of geography. You were born in India to a family in a particular geographical location. And then you started belonging to that community, to that religion, to that nation, because how you were born. And then you became slave of geography. So, when you start talking about national security, you are also then naturally inclined to understand what is nation and why is it important to talk about the security of that nation. Because if your nation is not secure, then it can cease to become a nation. If your family is threatened and your family per se loses out life, land, property, maybe it will cease to be a family. So therefore, a nation must first secure itself. And once it has secured itself, only then can it aspire. You cannot aspire and then bother about the security later on. It, it is a wrong sequence. So therefore, to understand national security, I will talk about our motherland, India. Somebody else, and you do not know who that somebody else is. So, earlier days, 
what used to happen that parents would teach the child, the teacher would teach the child. And the, type, the, the, the relationship between a guru and a sishya was well established. So whoever was your guru, the outcome would be, and the sishya would go on, on those lines and principles and develop accordingly. But now, guru is just one of them. Teacher is just one of them. Sometimes teacher is so insignificant that maybe it doesn't really even impact her. So therefore, who is guiding your life? You do not know who is guiding your life, yet it will be guiding. So therefore, you, what is your interest? You do not know. Your interest has been told to you that, listen, this is possibly your interest and every day you are running around and trying to find your interest. How is your interest going to match the interests which is going to be progressively? So therefore, this is where we have landed up. That you don't need to capture nations. You don't need to conquer the nations. You don't need to capture human beings. You just have to capture the mind of the person. You have to capture the mind of an individual. And in a way, you have captured the nation. Because the nation starts moving collectively to the ideology of what you're receiving from the first year that you handle them. And by the time you have finished all day, can you describe how your mind moved from morning till evening? Sometimes it is undescribable. If somebody tells you, what happened? You will say, what happened? You will say, what happened? But nothing happened. You are getting a point. So it means you have not understood the journey of 8 to 12 hours of waking hours if you woke longer than maybe 18 hours or you, if you slept then you say I have missed out on something because maybe behind me somebody else did something that I must catch up so I have been left behind and while half of the world awakes half of the world sleeps so now we have become 24 by 7 active people sleeping or something. so this is the speed at which we are growing and this is the this is called accelerated acceleration we are not no more in the era where you were just moving fast, you were now accelerated acceleration because every day your speed is getting faster and faster and faster and you don't know. So therefore, I take your mind back to the land where we live in here. And I also told you that we are slaves of job. But your mind is now moving away from the geography, but yet you realize that we are still slaves of geography. Now, what is geography? If you look at the map, um, let me, yeah. So, this is Arabian Sea, part of Indian Ocean. Somewhere there is Karachi here, this is Gwadar port here. This is Pakistan, and the Indus Valley runs something like this, this is the Indus River. And somewhere here is the Hindu Kush range. And somewhere here is Pali Knot, and then Himalayan range is run like this. You go around and go down to a point here, and this is Bay of Bengal. There is a place called Shitwe at Myanmar. Okay? So I have taken two names Gwadar and Shitwe. The Hindu Kush. Range runs like this, Pamir Khan goes down Himalayas and comes to Shitwe. So this is a big mountain range. And you would have heard that Sari Jaha Se Acha Ne Dostas Sana Mara. Parvat Bo Sabse Ucha, Bo Santari Hamara, Bo Paswa Hamara. Now what is that? Parvat Bo Sabse Ucha. It is the combination of Hindu Kush range and the Himalayan range and it protect or protected us in that understanding between water from where the Hindu Kush starts rising, goes around and comes down and merges in a place called Shippe which is in Myanmar. Now this is the Hindustan 
as it was known because the Indus Valley civilization is from where Hindustan. So the first time Hindustan was spoken about was by Guru Nanak 550 years back. He said, Khorasan Kasmana Kia Hindustan Dalai. Okay? That is the time Khorasan is Afghanistan. Khorasan Kasmana Kia Hindustan Dalai when Babur came across the Hindu Kush ranges. And that is from where the Hindustan started, the beginning of the Indus Valley. And then the Mughals went and ruled the country. At the Malfay Kulane, Thank you. Naya, he's telling God Almighty that Babur actually ran the tyranny on people. That it was strong man killing somebody who was absolutely harmless. 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 Sitting at home and Babur came and unleashed the terror which was unparalleled in the history of the world at that time. And India at that time was invaded repeatedly and Mughal rule was established in India. Was Santri Hamara? Go Paswam. At that time, Hindu Kush has two ranges, the Bolan Pass and the Khyber Pass. And that is why much later when Jeet Singh came up, he went and blocked the Khyber Pass because he said, Abhi Ane I will block them off. And that is where the passes are very important on the ranges. Few years back you heard in the dark what happened? Yes. The Chinese came? Well, it was basically the war on passes. Because Indian army and Chinese were actually staying away from one another because both countries had decided not to fight. So they took advantage. And we also moved into an area where we grabbed hold of some passes, they grabbed hold of some passes. So the war on passes is based on how you understand the security of the country that unless you block these passes on the Himalayan ranges and on the Hindu Kush ranges, you will find that they will be invaders coming across. So that is how it is understood. The second time, India was invaded, was by the British, but they came through the sea. The East India Company, then the Portuguese, then the French, and the Europeans came. And they came in from the sea. People came defenseless. We never prepared. Because in India we felt ocean is an obstacle. Pani hai, again yana. Thoda bachi pagado, yogi hamare to in in our rivers. It is a heliquid fish, so why go to the ocean? So ocean was seen as a hurdle. Whereas for Europeans, they saw ocean as an opportunity. So they came. At that time, when India and China put together, as you have read in the literature, a 50% share of the world GDP was in India and China. But both were in both were in way. Now the theory of national security must be more clear in your mind that we need to protect our mountains and we need to protect our coastline from the external threat. Then what happens is there can be internal threat. So I just explained to you one day. I was in a meeting and I found a Pakistani retired colonel and a lady from the Pakistan Ministry of External Affairs talking to one another and walked up to them and they we were having a meeting on the United Nations. 1997. At that time, a lot of movement was happening, the cricket diplomacy was happening, a lot of families were reunited, you know, all those, because after all, these were artificially partitioned countries, Pakistan and India. And that in any case, we will talk about it a bit later. So I went and spoke to them because they were going to comment on what I was saying. She says, do you know it is a favorite Indian crime room time pass talk that India and Pakistan are one or we were one culturally. 
It is the will of the Pakistan that we build a nation. And let me tell you now, even India will be listening to you. Now, I was stunned listening to two Pakistanis sitting or talking about India to my face. And therefore, they came up with a theory that we will destroy India by thousand cuts. And thousand cuts would mean that the nation was created as Union of India, where multicultural people came together with the past as 550 princely states woven together. And this is how the Union of India came up. But we have also now built a nation. The states were created on the basis of the language. And therefore, people who speak different languages, people who belong to different castes, cultures are the ones that they start looking at people little differently. Are the Indians around from India? And that is what this machine in your pocket in the morning sometimes confuses you. That what am I, your mind is being captured by thoughts which are being targeted and thrown at you every minute or every second. So therefore, you talk about national security. And in the national security, you realize that your nation, India, I'm talking about your nation because I'm teaching all nations of India, had been invaded even when you became independent. On 15th of August 1947, India became independent. But two things have happened. Not only independence, India also got partition. And there are two events which happened on 15th of August 1947, but we don't talk about the second event. We only talk about Independence Day. We don't talk about the partition. Because one event obscures the other. Why was India and Pakistan divided? We had almost 2 billion, uh, 2 million strength which participated in the Second World War. Modern, trained, blooded army which the British used all over the globe to fight and win battles for the British. Now these troops had to come back. Suppose India had been just left the way I described in Lukush and uh, uh, Himalayan combination and that in Dostan, the two million trained troops, modern, now to be led by the Indian officers, don't you think India would have become a military superpower in about a decade after independence? Do you think it is desirable by the British who are going to leave your country? So what should, do you think the British should do? Make the same military, which is one British Indian military, fight with one another. Divide the nation. Send some part of the army to Pakistan. And then create a Kashmir problem and then you say, ah, okay, now we are leaving. So they have jumped, they left India ahead of time. Though the independence was supposed to be planned, the independence was supposed to be planned in 1948. But what happened was that uh, the nation got partitioned, uh, uh, the nation got partitioned, partitioned in which year? They decided, like the Americans exited from Afghanistan overnight, the British decided to just exit India. Got their ships and got out of the space. In five weeks, they partitioned the nation. Red Cliff, who had partitioned the nation, actually never went on ground. He only flew in a plane, he says, partition the nation, and he went. They did not allow Subhash Chandra Bose, who was actually fighting the war of independence, even to come and see the light of the day because he had already been declared dead. The political leaders at that time were told, Tum Hindu ho, Tum Musliman ho, Ek Dusar se maro ke, alag alag And they were told, it's always good for you to separate. And then the, the army got divided, the reasons and the spark, and in a time that we committed now for 75 years, and that was the story of India and Pakistan. And then the Chinese have always been helped by the 
Western world. And they have come to become the superpower the way it is. And today we have a problem. That we have a problem with the northern border and we have a problem with the western border. So we have two enemies. We need to defend ourselves. How do we defend ourselves? So we fought. How many wars with Pakistan? How many wars with China? One war and number of conflicts. We participated in many other operations. And therefore, today we have the second largest army in the world, the fourth largest military in the world, completely blooded. But are we having a modern military? Because we are still importing. We are still importing the military hardware. We are the highest importers of military hardware in the world. How do you look at this honorably? How do you think we should have done and what we should have done that we did not invite ourselves to a point to become the maximum or the largest importers of military art. So what happened was during partition, the map according to the survey of India should look like this. On the ground, the line is something like this. This is a chain, this is between Pakistan, and this is Pakistan occupied. And the Indian army is sitting on this line, on this line, and this line. And this is, if the Indian army is sitting on this line, what do you think they would be doing on the border? The Chinese army is sitting here, the Pakistan army is sitting here, the Pakistan army is sitting here, and this line is being held by the military. And there are skirmishes that we face because the line has not been decided because the international border is as you see on the map. But the line of control is here with Pakistan and line of actual control is here and this is the Mac Mahan line. And China claims 90,000 kilometers here. Also, this is Chumbi Valley where there was an the issue of of They wanted to come and push us here to cut down this very narrow corridor which is called Siliguri Corridor. If the Chinese come here and they will cut this off, this entire part of the India could be cut off. So what do you think is meant by national security? Should Indian army allow the Chinese to come here and continue to move in this direction and ultimately cut you here and all the seven sisters then of the northeast in Pakistan got created in 1947 East Pakistan and West Pakistan Bangladesh was East, East Pakistan. Pakistan what kind of a division is this? One country here called West Pakistan, same country here called East Pakistan, common president and all. More population here, less population here, same religion. So same religion could not hold them together. And they became more and more fundamentalist. And Pakistan became the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. Because we now say as Pakistani that we are Islamic. And therefore we must get from the Arab world oil, money, petrol dollars, everything. And we create the atom bomb for you and call it Islamic bomb. We will eat grass, but we will have a bomb. They are eating grass still, but they have a bomb. They are eating grass, but they still have a bomb. Because they have a bomb, they threaten us. They threaten us with terrorism, they threaten us with Thousand cards, they threaten us in every United Nations, any meeting, they threaten us, they oppose us. And now they have teamed up with China, or China has teamed up with Pakistan, and this actually has become one monolith, which is against India. So we have 15,500 kilometers of land border. So, what else? Total 15,500 kilometers of land border. 15,500 kilometers, yes. 
We have 7,500 kilometers of coastline, totaling to about 20,000, 22,000 plus bottles. Is it less? And we are under threat. So we have a sea frontier, we have a land frontier. And now what has started happening is that the entire security dynamics have shifted to having technology and trade. If you don't have the money, you can keep defending your body, but you are poor. You cannot afford it. Your per capita income is low. Your GDP is okay. Per capita income is low for the population. The Chinese and the Americans are now to competing to become superpowers. The Americans wanting to retain the supremacy as a sole superpower and Chinese now wanting to cross the United States by 2049. So the Americans are saying, oh, we are very surprised, now they have a hypersonic design, now they have got 1500 nuclear bombs, they have got uh, Navy, which is now bigger than the United States of America. Uh, their economy is the second largest economy in the world. They are building Belt and Road Initiative. And now in Pakistan, they have got the CPEC corridor, which is China, Pakistan Economic Corridor, which runs from. Yeah. Now, not only this Indian territory. Yeah. But there is a Chinese road running through Pakistan. So you think the China and Pakistan will allow you to capture this area? If you were to capture this area, why did you not capture it earlier? In 1947, when the Pakistanis started raiding our country, that was the time when the Indian army was permitted to go into Kashmir to defend itself. We actually were going to reclaim the area and the British stopped us at some point. Oh, we go to the United Nations. Sorry. Otherwise, the Indian army was quite forced to go to the Prabhat. But we were told, we will sort it out. Plebiscite Hoga. Plebiscite Niwa. And the United Nations is there, but still, there is no plebiscite which has happened. The Indian military is occupied. The Indian Navy has got two aircraft carriers. The American Navy has got 11 aircraft carriers. <coughs> but no other Navy in the world has more than two aircraft carriers. The Chinese have two aircraft carriers also. So two carrier groups to China, two carrier groups to India. But Chinese have almost 700 naval vessels, smaller or bigger. India has about 150. And the Americans have lesser than the Chinese. But the total tonnage, the size of the ships is much bigger than the United States of America. So therefore, how do we balance China? They're trying to form an organization which is an alliance called Quad with India, US, Australia and Japan. If we do Quad against China, what will happen? Shall we form a military alliance with them? If we form a military alliance against China, will America help us if China attacks us? America is not going to help. Not going to help. Not sure. So what kind of a court is this then? If we go to be you have to know the war. But sir, they have no choice. This is a economic problem. Yes, because we did not want to go to military, so we said economic. They have told. They have told. Why they are saying this? Because we are not accepting a military. But what we are doing is we are doing some joint exercises together, which is symbolic because we also want to show China that look, yeah, we are supported. But at the end of it, we are seeing even Soviet Union, erstwhile Soviet Union, which helped us in 1971 war, we are dependent on Russia for arms and ammunition. So we are not fully going into the Western camp, and even Ukraine is happening. We are silent about it. We are not saying that Russia is doing good, but we are also not condemning Russia because we have our own. And if Russia and China are coming close to each other, so we are maintaining a strategic economy. And we are maintaining a strategic economy because we are buying oil, we are buying military hardware, and we are also buying some military hardware from America. So that is, that is how it is. 
So therefore, I am not going to carry on because I want to have a discussion. This was only a prelude which I gave. But as proud Indians, we know we were invaded, but we were never conquered. कुछ बात है कि हस्ती मिटती नहीं हमारी वर्षों से रहा है दुश्मन ये जमा हमारा सारे रहा से ओके सो आई टॉक टू मी विच एवर वे यू हैव क्वेश्चन और यू हैव एनी सजेशन एंड यू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट यू आर ऑल रिस्पॉन्डिंग मैनेजमेंट uh, what do you say, managers or, 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 the lead, uh, or, or leaders of the nation? Uh, if you got to become leaders of the nation, make sure you are also teachers of the nation. You cannot, you cannot be a teacher without being a leader, and you cannot be a leader without being a teacher. Man, leader who only only then he can. Show and must it must go the same way. What you preach, you must practice. So this is, I think, we are all set for your future. Let's talk about. There are any questions? So I'm going to buy a time lecture. Let me tell you, how many minutes? What is the time now? 11:20. So we have about half an hour. Okay. So if anybody wants to say something, please give out your name. Your class, and then your question or a suggestion, and then I'm very happy to hear. Sir Umesh. Umesh. Sir, what benefits India can get from internationalizing its rupee? And what other? Can you speak loudly because everybody else should hear. Sir, what benefits India can get from internationalizing its rupee? And what are uh, what can be the possible disadvantages? Thank you. Do you think the rupee can be internationalized? Sir, I think it is. Uh, How does IIF recommend the rupee can be internationalized? Let's open this debate. Let's open this debate. How can rupee be internationalized? It means the dollar must get nationalized. If dollar gets nationalized, only then you. So it means, are you saying rupee must replace the dollar? Are you saying that? How did it come to your mind? The rupee. So recently in the news, it came that 17 nations are. Yeah, means you have to speak up. Sir, 17 nations are accepting the Indian rupees. Accepting rupees. Indian rupee, or they are putting Indian rupee as superior to them that all all transactions will happen in rupee. With India, they can happen in rupee, not bilaterally between us two countries. So, so let's talk about it. That will all these 17 countries trade in rupee, or will America allow this to happen? Because what is the problem with SWIFT? You are actually using an international platform for transaction, and is that going to be available to you? You must make sure that you have platforms available to you where you can do international transactions without any problem. So if you can create your own script, if you can get your own equations, if the price of the gold is not controlled by London, and if the equations are not controlled by US, yes, you can deal it. But you know what happened to the Rafi? I'm not talking about Rafi now, because unless you get a very different comparison, what happened to the Rafi? Get the Rafi, and what happened to Saddam Hussein? They actually want to break away from dollar. They were short term. They were short term. But I'm not talking about rupee here. I'm just talking about how America does business to protect because for them. Okay, what is America? America is an enterprise democracy. America is not a democracy as we understand democracy is. For governments, it is an enterprise democracy. It is capitalist. It is business democracy. So therefore, everything is dependent on the dollar. If the whole democracy is dependent on 
enterprise, it means whole politics is dependent on dollar. I think you have challenging the Americans, which is not a bad idea, and you should. It's a great idea, it's a great thought, it is a thought of leadership that you should. But then when you have an idea, you must have a way with all. When you have an aspiration, you must have a plan. If you have a plan, you must have a policy. And if you have a policy plan, you must have people with you. Answer your question. Largely in this class, I find 
75% people have no opinion. Because you never raise hands. If 75% this is a sample now. You do research now. There's something called sampling. So in the sample, 75% Indians have no opinion. And you have no opinion that what standing do you have in the world? What standing are you looking for in the world? Don't you think it's time for India to stand up and take a position? Or it is the time for us to keep quiet and keep saying, Yeh bhi thik hai, wo bhi thik hai, jo bhi thik hai, karna is that, is that the India that you want to build for us? So please tell me in one solid decision of yours, are you going to be supporting Russia or are you going to support the Western world? Or is there a strategy in your mind? Must take it. Because if you are going to keep looking at the world, and you will have to accept it. You accept the partition. According to China, India is a struggling nation. According to China, India is a nation which has a democracy which is absolutely rudimentary. They understand India cannot get, is not deserving of any respect because you have no opinion. <coughs> no opinion whatsoever. <clears throat> what kind of a respect is it? So according to China, <coughs> they said India doesn't matter because they have no opinion. According to China, they said Indians have always served the interest of the master. They serve the colonial interest. India actually has the colonial world to help the masters to rule India. We were participating in that. This is what China said. Are you all still going to prove the same hypothesis, right? Because this is what I hear that you have no opinion. How can you not have an opinion? And how can you not have a basis of an opinion? That is the problem with national security. How are you going to become managers when you have no opinion? How are you going to actually manage affairs when you say to your particular subordinate, go and that's why you can't do it. What kind of a management is this? Are you MBS students? Have you been selected by a process? Do you have an intent? Do you have a reason? Can you distinguish between the good, the bad? Can you evaluate? Can you, can you give out the pros and cons? Give me a course. Give me a profitable course. Give me three courses and tell me the best course. This is what you should be doing as MBA students. Please tell me. We are India. This room is India today and 75% don't have an opinion. Please make an opinion. Okay, yeah, I raised. I see the uh, hand raised. Okay, but excellent. If you have an opinion, it means that is the reason why in the United Nations India was absent in voting. Because of the reason that we are not taking sides. It means India said we are going to have strategic autonomy. We don't why did we not say that? Because we don't we don't also ascribe to a nation and one nation attack India. Is that okay? Jarmin, thank you for this question. Any other question? You have another one? Okay. Thank you, Jamie. Shall I again ask a question to the house? She says, in the economic crisis of Pakistan, India is willing to help Pakistan. Pakistan is not ready to accept Indian help. What is the reason? Is that your question? Please tell me what you think is the reason of Pakistan. A show of hands. Show of hands. You think Pakistan should accept the Indian help? If the answer is yes, there is the hand. Okay, if you think that Pakistan should not accept the help, raise your hands. You can't have this India not having a good people. That would be against the. Do you know India is a highly humiliated people? <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, I'll give you, I'll give you another story. We had the Chief Minister of Punjab, Mr. Cabinet. He was traveling in an ambassador car with a secretary. And he was, the car was going on the road at that time. There was single roads, roads were narrow. The car was going at some speed. And there was circled on both sides. But from one side, a rabbit came out. And the rabbit crossed the road. The car is still yet approaching. Then the rabbit went back. And the rabbit started doing like this and came out of the car and perished. So Pratap Singh Karam told his secretary in Punjabi, Jo Aadhi decision in the Seta was a year ago. <laughs> because rabbit could not decide when either than or other than he couldn't decide, couldn't decide and then he was crushed by the car. If you cannot take a decision, you will perish. And as managers, as the future managers, or the leaders of the nation, you have to take a decision. And you should understand the process of making a decision of correct evaluation. And you have to have the courses open, you have to have the evaluation of courses that come to the best course. Tell me now, she has a question. Why do you think Pakistan is not accepting a help? Okay, I'll let you change it. Why do you think Pakistan is not accepting a help? In any case, what help can you give Pakistan? Money? Money? Yes, sir. They are already getting money from here and there. China, why should China not give money? China has surplus money. China, in any case, has given so much of loan that Pakistan is in the debt of the world. Now, India wants Pakistan to come under Indian debt. Do you want Pakistan to come under Indian debt? Do Pakistan? Do you think Pakistan would want to come under Indian debt? Done. No, okay. Next question. Loudly. Loudly. I can't hear you. In United Kingdom, under Indian embassy, they removed the flag. So, what's your opinion on that? Why that happened? Cannot. You cannot remove the Indian flags. Absolutely. Unethical. Uh, UK government, now we are talking about United Kingdom, so I think it's a chapter that we talk about United Kingdom. UK ruled India. We were United Kingdom. We were colony of United Kingdom. We are also part of the Commonwealth. The same embassy that you are talking about was the foreign office of India. India was the jewel of the British Empire. We provided for the military and raw materials for the British industry, including the foreign industry. As I said, when British left India, did they want India to become powerful? So what do you think? Down the line they would have changed? Have, do you think down the line they would have changed? All of a sudden now, I say, you know, India ki madad karo. Are you madad karo? Jab aapne shuru to, when Pakistan was at war with India, who was supporting Pakistan? The Western world? Yes, sir. Describe the Western world. The US. US. And? The UK. And? The United Kingdom. UK. The seventh fleet was coming in, and behind that there was a carrier group of the British Navy, Royal Navy, which was also shattered. Why? Against India. Right? They have looted everything. Most of the museums in London and in England are actually decorated by the loot of India. So why are you running from India to protect? And so why are you dependent on UK to protect you? They are defenseless themselves. A country which cannot protect by flag cannot protect their own. Do you understand what I am saying? Yes, How can they protect their own flag when they can't protect mine? And who are these people? Do you have their addresses with you? Do you know who they were? Do you know who instigated them? Do you know who propped them? Do you know what are the repercussions in India? If you have to see through all this, and therefore you will realize what goes into securing India. You got the answer? Yes. Any other question? 
नो अदर क्वेश्चन समय हो गया ब्रिटिश ब्रिटिश नॉट इन गोवा पोर्चुगीज वर्ग हुआ ओके बिटवीन 1947 टू 1960 इंडिया वाज गोइंग थ्रू अ प्रोसेस इंटरनली स्टेबलाइजिंग इंडिया डिवीजन ऑफ स्टेट्स गेटिंग द प्रिंसली स्टेट्स अमेलगेमेटेड इनटू द यूनियन ऑफ इंडिया देयर वाज अ प्रोसेस राइट एंड ड्यूरिंग दैट प्रोसेस एट द कल्कुलेशन ऑफ द सेकंड वर्ल्ड वॉर द यूनाइटेड नेशंस केम अप एज अ बॉडी व्हिच when in 1947 when the pakistan army and the kabilis were attacking us and we said we would go to the united nations india waited for some time for the united nations now a new nation has been, the new body has come should automatically do things which we should not do militarily when the united nations did not do anything in 1961 we liberated go then got it anything else simple